So thank you all for joining us again. This is the second open house for the Lexington Parkway phase two project. Uh, my name is Tom Holmes and we have several presenters tonight and I'll have them introduce themselves as they begin presenting. I'm going to kick it off to Nick Fisher, the project manager from Ramsey County to begin. Hi, I'm Nick Fisher, uh, the project manager for Ramsey County, like Tom said. Um, the, we're starting tonight to kind of show you a map of where we're located here uh, among the Highland District Council and the Fort Road uh, District Council, so kind of where that yellow star is. Um, so we're realigning Lexington, which was done last year up to 7th Street, and then this is phase two that'll connect from 7th Street all the way down to Shepherd Road. Um, so this is to improve local connections and regional travelers for not only vehicles, but also pedestrians and bicyclists. So we're also multimodal here. And the city street is now called Elway, uh, will be transferred to Ramsey County upon completion of the project. So our, our next slide will have uh, Kevin from Highland Park uh, say a few things. District Council. Yes, uh, I'm gonna throw in my Okay, hey, good afternoon. Uh, this is Kevin Galton. I'm, uh, one of the board of, I'm on the board of the directors of the Highland District Council and I chair the Transportation Committee. I uh, just wanna share a little bit of background about how we got to this point. Um, phase one is, is largely where Highland was involved, as you saw on the map. Um, there's a little bit of a notch into Highland Park uh, that's, that's part of the Port Road Federation. Um, and so we'll let them speak a little bit more about the contemporary details. Um, but one of the key purposes of district councils is to develop a district plan every 10 years. Um, that plan is put together using a ton of community input, using surveys, meetings, pop-up events, really any way we can get a hold of people. And over more than two decades, the HDC has heard a strong desire to improve the intimidating five-way intersection of Lexington, Montreal, and West 7th. Um, we're very pleased that that is uh, substantially complete at this point. Um, there's also We've also heard a strong desire to improve connections to the Mississippi River, um, including Crosby Park across Shepherd Road. Um, we've got excellent trails along the river, but it's really quite isolated from the neighborhood in Highland Park. And phase two really provides a great opportunity to improve those connections um, for walking, biking, and driving. Um, and also we're hearing more recently um, a desire to um, consider the future use of the Canadian Pacific rail spur, the CP rail spur, um, which actually bridges over uh, the segment of Elway Street uh, that Nick just described. Um, and, and we've been hearing that people want to acknowledge that that may be a future use for bike and pedestrian trails um, and potentially transit. And we should uh, consider ways that we can better connect that into the neighborhood. So ultimately this realignment we believe provides a safer and more pleasant connection for people walking and biking. And it'll also replace really badly degraded road surfaces and paths. I think we've all experienced the bumpy broken uh, concrete joints along Elway. Uh, so we're excited to see some improvements there. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to uh, the Fort Road Federation. All right. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so I'm Casey Carmody. I'm one of the board members of the West 7th uh, Fort Road Federation, and I, I also uh, co-chair the Transportation and Land Use Committee. Uh, and I do just want to echo Kevin's point. Um, you know, one of the things our district council is always interested in is ways to better connect uh, parts of our neighborhood with the river. Um, and given the fact that the significant portion of the West 7th, you know, district is along the river, you know, this project really is exciting for us because it does seem to provide connections throughout the West End neighborhood as a whole and just kind of maybe make our, our neighborhood a little more connected. So it's very exciting from that perspective. Uh, also in helping chair the Transportation and Land Use Committee during the past year, one of the consistent refrains that that I hear uh, is concerns about traffic safety, you know, really all throughout the neighborhood, uh, which includes better safety for drivers, bikers, pedestrians who are on foot, um, you know, especially in relation to West 7th and Shepherd Road and just, you know, just speeds is what I'm hearing a lot. So, you know, our, our district council has really been invested in, in the developments, you know, and the direction of this project to, to make our neighborhood a little safer and kind of improve ways that, that everyone can traverse throughout, you know, the area. Um, and just as, as a personal note, personal note, you know, I was recently driving uh, down, you know, that way where, where the project is going on. And I had to stop at the, the new light at the corner of West 7th, uh, New Lexington, uh, Elway, uh, and I really appreciated those updates. Uh, you know, it, it does seem like a lot. It does seem a lot safer 
uh, and as someone who formerly lived in, in High, Highland Park, you know, using that that intersection all the time, uh, it, it's really highly improved. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how the next phase progresses, and I know everybody on our board is too. So, I'm uh, really looking forward to, to hearing what you all have to say tonight. Thanks. I'm up next. My name is Larry Poplar. I work for TKDA. We're a design engineering firm located or based out of St. Paul. And so we've been assisting the county and the city on this project from phase one and now phase two. And the graphic you're seeing shows the different phases. In blue is uh, phase one, which was completed last uh, fall. Um, it removed Lexington Parkway from the five-way intersection with Montreal and West 7th Street. Um, provided a new connection to West 7th Street for a Lexington Parkway just north of the new uh, Lexington Landing building. Um, it provided a, a new connection of Adrian Street um, on the south side of Highland Nursery to Elway. And then on, in red is the phase we're looking at tonight and um, discussing for um, reconstruction. And it in complete, completes a uh, the link between that Adrian Street or West 7th down to Montreal and then reconstructs Elway Street from Montreal down to Shepherd Road. So this is a schedule for the project. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about it, but uh, phase one is scheduled to be complete this spring. And then phase two is under review for design and will design plans are, are are planned to be completed by this time next year with construction in the in the summer of 2022. This is a photo looking south toward the river, um, aerial photo kind of showing the new alignment of, uh, of Lexington Parkway. It removed that leg from uh, Montreal up uh, north or on the, up on the top of uh, where the new building is and then the curved um, roadway connects to West 7th Street as the new roadway connection. Um, in January, the signal system went up and was operational and the detour that was in place for most of last year was removed. Um, this spring, we will complete the remaining sidewalk connections and pedestrian ramps on the project and complete restoration of uh, the turf on the project. So this, uh, this graphic shows kind of a slice of the roadway, kind of a what we call a cross section and, and what we built in that phase one. It included um, sidewalks on both sides, bike lanes in each direction, um, one vehicle travel lane in each direction. And then in some areas we had parking um, where we could fit it. In other areas we had uh, turn lanes, right and left turn lanes in that first phase. So the next phase is another aerial looking south toward the river. This shows uh, um, the green area, which will, will extend the roadway in that area to make the connection and then reconstruct Elway Street uh, down the hill under the railroad bridge and down to Shepherd Road. And really the goals of these, this project is to finish that connection of Lexington Parkway to Shepherd Road make the street safer for people to, who bike, um, walk and drive, reconstruct Elway Street, and while we're at it, improve the, the pavement, but also the utilities in the area. I think that's the end of my part. I'll turn it over back to, over to Tom. Thanks, Larry. So for public engagement, uh, we are doing presentations to the district councils regularly uh, this is the second open house. Um, we had one in the winter. Uh, we're doing website updates and have a survey and now a comment map, which we're going to share with you uh, towards the end of the presentation today. Uh, and then we are also getting help from district council liaisons, helping to spread the word about the project and do some uh, additional engagement. Uh, here's a, an overview of all of the things that we've done so far. Um, we launched the website in November, had a couple of district council meetings in November as well. 
uh, did the first open house on December 1st, um, and then had a survey open from December 7th to January 6th. We got almost 200 people to respond to that. So that was great feedback. Um, and then uh, this March, we've had a couple of district council meetings, uh, presentations again. So I'm gonna share some of the results of the survey that we did uh, over the winter. Uh, the questions we asked uh, were about the design criteria and then we presented a, a few cross sections that we wanted feedback on. Um, so the design criteria, uh, I'll uh, read them off, uh, create convenient, efficient and safe experiences for everyone provide pedestrian facilities that connect with the surrounding homes and businesses, provide continuous bike connections, provi provide reliable traffic flow today and in the future, and create facilities that can be easily maintained. We had about 80% uh, of the people agree that these criteria that we're going to use to uh, look at the project uh, accurately reflected the priorities for the community. Uh, people who disagreed said that they would like um, more emphasis on uh, working together with other agencies. Um, some people said that they wanted to see more uh, walking and biking included uh, above uh, driving, uh, but generally people agreed that these fit pretty well with what we're trying to do. Then we presented uh, four different cross sections and uh, people voted on their preferred cross section and uh, were able to comment on what they liked and didn't like. Uh, the highest rated was uh, option D, which included a median and then shared pedestrian and bicycle trail on each side, as well as vehicle lanes in each direction. Uh, this only had 45%, so there was no real consensus on which one that people really preferred. The, section, the second um, highest was option B, which included a shared pedestrian and bicycle trail on one side, vehicle lane in each direction, sidewalks on one side, and then non-street uh, bike lanes in each direction. And even though we didn't get consensus, we did get a lot of great feedback that are uh, helped inform this uh, upcoming design uh, that we're going to share with you tonight that shows the road layout from an aerial view. Um, so some of these main takeaways that we got from the survey and from all of the engagement that we did over the winter. Uh, one of the, the biggest ones was that uh, many people expressed uh, the importance of traffic calming on Lexington Parkway. They uh, are in favor of reducing Elway Street to one lane in each direction and they want to discourage speeding to create safe environments for everyone. And then the other pretty universal thing that we heard was support for improved pedestrian and bicycle facilities, uh, creating safe, highly visible and convenient walking and biking facilities. Um, options D and B uh, both included off street trails. Uh, so we did hear from the community that that was something that was important to include in this project. Um, some people talked about how they wanted pedestrian and bicycle facilities separated. Some said um, ab cyclists prefer to be on road, uh, but every, there was a large number of uh, people or a large portion of people that responded that said that they want uh, improved pedestrian and bicycle facilities on this phase two part of the project. So tonight um, we are going to present three uh, layouts and they're all going to be kind of categorized based on the differences at the Montreal and Elway intersection, which is currently the three-legged intersection that is going to become the four-legged intersection. Um, and this is frankly the portion of the project that our team has been discussing the most. Um, so we really do need your feedback uh, because these are the same types of conversations that we are, have been having uh, as a project team. Uh, I'm going to present the kind of how we got to where we're at now really quick before we dive into the road layouts. Uh, so I'm going to present a couple that did not carry forward before talking about the three that do carry forward. We first looked at a traffic signal at the intersection of Montreal and Elway. 
um, and found that the projected traffic levels do not call for a traffic signal, so did not choose to move forward with that one. Then we looked at a four-way stop at that intersection and uh, found that it facilitates safe bicycle and pedestrian connections, has a minimal intersection footprint, but will result in inefficient traffic operations. And although um, there were some positives to this, to this one, we felt there were three better options. So the first one that we're going to share with you tonight is a two-way stop at that intersection. Um, the positives of this one are that it's low cost and easy to maintain. It minimizes the intersection footprint, uh, but it's challenging to cross on Elway Street. The second one that we decided to carry forward is a roundabout. Uh, roundabout improved traffic flow or will improve traffic flow while reducing speeds and frequency of severe crashes. Uh, it has curbed rate raised pedestrian islands, which we'll show um, some examples of, as well as the aerial of. And then uh, a larger intersection footprint has the highest cost and additional property impacts. So that, that's the negative that we are um, trying to decide on if to move forward with. And then uh, mini roundabout. Uh, this is kind of the in-between between the two-way stop and the roundabout. It improves traffic flow while reducing speeds and frequency of severe crashes. It has a smaller intersection footprint than the roundabout and will have less cost and fewer property impacts, but more than the two-way stop. Uh, and it has only slightly raised islands, so they're not the um, full curved islands uh, on the roundabout, which we'll, we'll share with you in a second. Um, so we'll do some repetition here and go through the three, three options that we're looking at. Uh, I'm going to pass it to uh, Kevin, and Kevin's going to speak to each of these options again. Sure. Thanks, Tom. Um, so here's our first option. This is kind of a standard two-way stop. In this case, we would be looking down Elway Street, traveling through the intersection without stopping, while Montreal is our cross street with the stop signs. Uh, the photo here is from Ford Parkway and is sort of similar to what we would be proposing with one traffic lane in each direction, a center turn lane, and on-street bike lanes. Uh, for pedestrians here crossing, it would be kind of a longer crossing of around 40 feet or so to get across all the lanes and the bike lanes, which creates some challenges. Um, and then there's this doesn't show the multi-use trail that we'll be proposing, which you'll see in the layout later. Um, Overall, this option is the least expensive and has the fewest property impacts. If we can go on to option B. This is a roundabout. The photo here, this is a full-size roundabout with a large raised median. There would be one lane in each direction approaching the roundabout and a single lane that would circulate through the circle of the roundabout. All the vehicles would have to slow down as they approach the roundabout to create a traffic calming effect while continuously circulating, which improves the traffic flow. And the roundabouts have historically reduced the frequency of severe crashes. Um, for the pedestrians, there's the raised median, which separates them from the vehicles. And off to the side, there's the multi-use trail for bikes and pedestrians. The Full roundabout option is the largest option that's being proposed and has the largest property impacts and highest costs. So option C is the mini roundabout. Mini roundabout is sort of a blend of the previous full-sized roundabout and kind of the neighborhood traffic circles that St. Paul has installed in a few places. Um, like I think Jefferson and Davern, for instance, has a small neighborhood traffic circle. This is sort of in between those two. There would be a slightly raised center island that would kind of provide a delineation for the drivers, while larger vehicles like trucks or buses or emergency vehicles would be driving over that as they move through the intersection. Um, there's also the single approach lane in each direction with a single lane circulating through the circle of the roundabout. And this would have a similar traffic calming effect and reduction to the severe crashes as the full size roundabout, but on a smaller footprint. 
And then it, for the pedestrians, there's a, the smaller median crossing with multi-use trails on the sides of the road. Um, this is a smaller footprint than the full roundabout, but is kind of in between the full roundabout and the two-way stop as far as property impacts and costs. So. All right, I'm going to steal control back here. Um, we are going to uh, you'll pop the um, website into the chat box and you'll be able to find a comment map that is now open. Uh, so we're going to actually drive through that, but you can also take a look on your own. Let's see here. Give me a second. I'm sure you all are seeing me flip through my slides. Um, so this is the project website and you can find the comment map down here. And it looks like this, this is the desktop version. Uh, mobile will look similar with some differences, but generally you'll find the same things. Uh, this is the uh, instruction window that pops up. It tells you you can flip through uh, the three different options that we're looking at on the uh, sidebar to the left, uh, option A, the two-way stop, option B, the roundabout, or option C, the mini roundabout. And then you can leave comments on each of these individually. Uh, but then there's a survey as well that asks which option you prefer overall. Uh, both types of feedback are going to be very valuable for our team. Um, it gives some instructions on how to leave those comments um, on directly on the map. We have a few different comment categories that uh, look at the different types of users as well as uh, like or in other ideas. Um, there are some icons that have some more information directly on the map. Uh, and then uh, we have our project information down here. So uh, just to give you the lay of the land really quick, uh, again, you can always find the instructions here. Here are the three different types of uh, options that we're looking at, categorized mainly by the intersection at Montreal and Elway, uh, but uh, these layouts include everything all the way south to Shepherd Road. Um, so I am going to start at the north end for each of these options and then work our way south for, for all three. And uh, Kevin is going to describe what's going on in each of these. So this is the first one, the two-way stop. Sure. Thanks, Tom. So we can go through, we'll kind of walk through these alternatives in the same order we went through the intersection types. Um, this first one is our two-way stop. So as you can see, um, as we kind of came through the phase one construction in West 7th, we kind of move along through Adrian Street to kind of finish that intersection. That's kind of where the construction phase one was completed. And then as we head down, towards Montreal, you can see there's a left turn lane in the center and bike lanes on the sides and then six foot sidewalks on both sides of the road. You can see that there is some impacts to the property and particularly on the northwest corner property, there's impacts on their east and north sides. Um, to the west, we're proposing adding a right turn lane for vehicles that are traveling from Montreal to go southbound on Elway along with bike lanes being shown there on, on that west leg of Montreal with uh, some impacts to parking there as well. Um, the east leg of Montreal is very, very similar to existing with access and road width and access to the driveways there being maintained the same as it is. Um, as we move south, uh, there's a 10 foot multi-use trail on the west side of the road should be available for bikes or pedestrians, and then a six foot sidewalk on the east side of the road. With the um, projected traffic being expected to be fairly significant from northbound Elway taking left turns to westbound Montreal, there's the left turn lane there. And then as we head south, that left turn lane transitions back to a uh, paved median. And then as we keep going, uh, we get to the, the railroad bridge that was discussed and the th three existing bridge piers that are supporting it. Um, I know Kevin Gallatin made some notes about that, but any 
uh, work on that bridge is uh, part of a different project. Uh, unfortunately, we're not doing any work on the bridge in, as part of this one. Um, as we keep moving south, um, there's a, there's a we're creating a the median continues and then there's a left turn lane kind of created for northbound vehicles to travel into the residential buildings that are off to the west of the road. Um, moving down to the intersection at Shepherd Road, uh, the design creates new pedestrian facilities and crosswalks on all four legs of the intersection. But otherwise, the, the intersection is fairly similar to the existing and uh, access to Crosby Farm Park to the south is the same as, as in, in the existing case. So that covers our first alternative. We can go back to the north and take a look at the roundabout option. So as, as the road comes down, it's kind of stays similar, but as it comes around the corner towards Montreal, um, the bike lanes sort of transition off of the road and onto a multi-use trail on both sides. So bikes can avoid the roundabout if they, if they choose. Inside the roundabout, you can see the single lane that sort of circulates through the middle. And then the green area in the middle is a raised grass section. And then the gray area is a concrete apron section that for trucks that are making turns through the roundabout. And then on each approach, there would be a median that would separate the traffic lanes and provide a space where pedestrians could pause while they're crossing. Um, to the looking at the, the northwest corner, the property there uh, has very significant impacts on multiple sides. And we would be working with the property owner in this case for mitigation for those impacts. On the west leg of the intersection, you can see a similar places where bikes would transition off the trail and back onto the street and some reduction in parking on that west leg as well. To the east, the road is wider than existing so, and the corners push out, which results in property impacts to the northeast and southeast corners. Um, the parking lot to the southeast would have to would need changes to their lot and access where we would again be working with that property owner uh, for mitigation and how that would be configured. And then back to, on to Elway, as we move south, kind of continue with 10 foot multi-use trails on both sides of the road and a center median in this option. Um, the roads and trails then kind of head underneath the railroad bridge, kind of similar to before. Um, similar left turn lane that travels into the residential buildings to the west. And then at Shepherd, the primary difference is since there's no on-street on bike lanes here, um, the lanes are slightly con different configuration there. But otherwise, it's pretty similar adding new pedestrian facilities and crosswalks to all four legs of the intersection. And same access to Crosby Farm Park is existing. And then our last or our third option is alternative C, which is the mini roundabout option. Um, a lot of parts of this option are very similar to the previous, just on a smaller scale. On the north side, you can see the bike lanes still transition from the road back onto the, the multi-use trails in the same way. Uh, also one lane approaching in each direction and one lane in each circulating through the roundabout itself. Um, the center circle would be the slightly raised median to kind of delineate the road from for drivers, but would also allow trucks to drive over the top of it. So for instance, if there was a semi driving north on Elway that was trying to take a left to go west on Montreal, they would enter the roundabout and the front end would sort of follow the traffic lane while the rear tires would end up traveling kind of over the center and over the median which is why we end up with kind of lower curb there and not a full height curb, which is a way to move trucks through while kind of still minimizing the footprint of the roundabout. The property impacts on the Northwest corner are reduced from the roundabout, but they're still significant and uh, they would, we would still be working with that property owner um, to work on the mitigation for those impacts. 
For the West, the transition back into the existing shape of Montreal is a little faster, but there would still be some impact to parking and um, also another transition there, kind of allowing bikes to transition between the road and the trail. The east side, the park, the overall property impacts are reduced from the large roundabout, but there are still some impacts and there would be a need to reconfigure some parking and access in the southeast. And overall, this option has fewer property impacts than the full size roundabout, but more than the two way stop and it kind of puts it in the middle as far as overall property impacts and overall costs. So as this one, as this alternative moves south, uh, this is very similar to the previous option where there's two 10 foot trails, one on each side of the road, a paved median. Um, the road kind of continues down through the railroad bridge the same way. Um, similar uh, left, left turn lane into the resident, residential properties on the west and creation of new pedestrian facilities and crosswalks on all four quadrants of the intersection and access to the Crosby Farm Park. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, two things I wanted to point out before we um, flip from this back to our presentation, but we'll, we'll definitely come back to this. Uh, this includes uh, the phase one layout as well. Uh, the aerial isn't quite updated, so that's why we, we have that on here. Uh, this portion is already complete. And then we also have um, the uh, information that we included on the presentation, the trade-offs for each of these options, as well as the example. You can also click on the uh, information below the example photo, and it will take you to that spot on Google Maps if you want to look around. Again, these aren't the exact same as what we're looking at, but they are similar. So we wanted to provide you with some context for these. Let's flip back here to the presentation. Um, so again, this, this uh, comment map is now open. We would love to get your comments on individual layouts as well as uh, on the survey, uh, telling us which of these options you prefer. Um, you can also tell us in the comment box or on this at this meeting, we'd love to hear from you. Um, here is the information to get in touch. Uh, we have the project website, which has been shared in the chat, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, and then uh, Nick is the main point of contact at the county. And we are ready to take some questions. So um, we've been getting some in the chat box, and please continue to enter them as, as you come up with them. Or feel free to raise your hand, and we will unmute you. Uh, I'm going to start with some of the questions that we have been getting in the chat box first and kind of work our way through. Um, so I'm going to flip back to our layout for some of these. Uh, the first question I've got here, will the private home to the west of the proposed road um, directly across from high rise need to be removed? And that is the, I'm guessing, the house at the northwest corner. And, and that's a very good question. Um, there are some impacts in almost all of the uh, options we have. Um, none of the lines go through the house, so that's a good sign. However, the homeowner uh, has a nice grassy area right next to their house now. And in the end, some of these options have a sidewalk very, very close or trail very close to their house. And that would probably make me uncomfortable, probably makes them uncomfortable. So if they wanted to relocate, um, uh, we can work with them on that. And also if they wanted to stay, let's say they wanted some sort of fencing or um, something to you know, mitigate the, the view, uh, we can work with them on that. So it's, uh, it's definitely a big impact, especially on the roundabout option where they get, where the trail gets really close to the house. So it's not impossible for them to stay, but, uh, uh, it'd be an uncomfortable situation probably for the owner. A follow-up question uh, to that one for you, Nick. When you say mitigation efforts, what do you need, mean with the property owner? Do you intend to do a high wooden sound barrier? 
Uh, probably, maybe, probably not a sound barrier, more like a good neighbor fence. Um, mitigation is also, we're buying some property from them. So mitigation would be in the form of um, basically paying them money for property that would go from their privately owned to Ramsey County uh, Roadway Authority, basically. So that would be mitigation. And then there's impacts to the remainder of the property. It's probably not valued as much. So then we'd have to make up for that as well because it gets smaller, obviously. Okay. Um, this is a good uh, big scope question. Um, uh, let's explore keeping the intersection of Montreal and Elway at T-junction having multi-use trail for pedestrian and cyclists uh, from Montreal to Adrian Street. Um, Nick, could you talk a little bit about the history of the project and why this is being done where it is? Yeah, there's just a, a lot of lack of connection to uh, uh, to the river and, and Shepherd Road there. And the two district councils kind of really hit on it. They've been working on this kind of thing for years and years and years, trying to get a better connection even for vehicles. Um, however, there is always a want just to just to make it a, a pedestrian bike connection. So that's always a, a an option too, but uh, it's more it's better for the community to be able to get out all modes to the river at, at any point uh, is what they're looking for, so. Great. Um, all right, other than the options at the intersection of Elway and Montreal, are there roadway differences on the rest of Elway down to Shepherd Street between the three options? Um, Nick, this could be you, this could also be Kevin, uh, could, could you explain a little bit about the differences to the south of the intersection down, down here? Uh, Kevin, you wanna take that one? Uh, sure, I mean, primarily the only real difference is the one option had bike lanes on the street and the other ones, um, they were off the street. So this is the two-way stop version and then we just flipped one of the roundabouts, but um, the two roundabouts are more or less the same uh, option where there's the bike lanes are off the road with the 10 foot trails on both sides and in the two-way stop one we put us the 10 foot trail on just the west and then a just a six foot sidewalk to the east with on street bike lanes so that was the primary difference that we had great um, this question is about the two-way stop. Uh, can the yield lane from Montreal to Elway be retained with the two-way stop? And I guess I'm, uh, I'm not sure what yield lane they're talking about. Um, Nick? Is that the right turn lane maybe? Yes, maybe maybe that's. Um... I think in, in the existing road, like the right turns there, there's kind of that little island wow. in the middle and the right turn lanes have the yield to kind of go around it. I don't, with Lexington in this case or Elway Street being, um, not having the stop there, I don't think that that yield could be maintained, especially with just the single lane to the south. I mean, I guess it would be possible if we added another extra lane in there to receive it that then merged in later, but that's not been a thing that's been discussed or considered. All right, let's uh, get into some roundabout questions. Uh, we said higher costs for full roundabout, uh, but highest cost by how much was the question? Do we have a, a figure or some sort of um, multiplier that we we know the difference between this cost and the cost of the other the other options? Uh, I'm thinking right about two hundred fifty thousand, Larry. Do you have an idea? Yes, yeah, so we we haven't studied, we haven't computed a a full cost estimate on all three options, but in general, the cost for a single lane traditional roundabout is going to be between one and two million. Yeah. The full roundabout includes property acquisition. But then 
the mini roundabout is uh, in the neighborhood of 100 to 500,000. And then the, the uh, two, two way traffic or the two way stop um, is just the cost of the signage. So basically a uh, $2,000 cost. And that's in addition to all of the, the other road improvements. Yep. And Larry's lumping in the right of way costs and the construction costs. So that's a good idea. I, I don't think I was doing that. Um, will the only access to the Montreal high, high rise be uh, to the east for the standard roundabout option? Uh, that uh, one closest to the intersection would turn into like a right in right out. So um, if you want to take a left out, the east one would be your only option. All right. Had a question about the mini roundabout maintenance. How well can trucks handle the mini roundabout with snow piles in the winter? Um, the snow will be removed in the middle of that median area because it's raised only a few inches. Um, so we'll have to work with the plow drivers, obviously, to kind of teach them how to do it. But it's only, it's a big flat table, basically just a few inches and the plows will go right over it and, and plow it off every time it snows. Uh, this question is about renaming uh, Elway Street. Do you know yet if Elway will be renamed by the county to keep Lexington Avenue consistent throughout the length of the corridor? Uh, it would be nice to keep the Lexington name. Uh, you just make it, you know, all one. However, the county does not name roads. It's the city's call, so we will work with the city to see uh, uh, what they want to name it. None, none of that has been decided yet. See here. Um, this person says, I'm presuming the bus shelter on West 7th will be installed in front of the Discovery Building. Yes. Do you know about that one, Larry? So this is on phase one, I think, is what they're asking. Yeah, so yeah. we're working with uh, Metro Transit on the location for that our design included a concrete pad at that inter at the intersection but um, in further talks with Metro Transit they're discussing a mid-block bus stop between Albion and Lexington so it's, it's yet to be determined we are still working out that out with uh, Metro Transit but it would be installed uh, this spring where, wherever that location is. Uh, back to some kind of overall project scope questions. Um, can you confirm that the entire intersection of Elway and Shepherd will be repaved? Uh, it appears that way in the drawing. And, and that current intersection is um, owned and maintained by the city of St. Paul. So we'll work with them to see if they want to reconstruct that with the project. Um, it's very likely that it will be, but it, it's it'll be at their cost, so we have to ask them. Uh, please expand on how on-street parking on Montreal Avenue east of the intersection uh, to Seventh could change. So, what what will parking look like over here for? for any of these options. Kevin, you want to take that one? Um, I mean, I think it's going to eventually depend uh, certainly on which uh, alternative is their final design. Uh, some number of parking spots are 
will our space will end up getting removed, but the exact uh, limits I don't think are determined yet. And then the city of St. Paul has also expressed an interest in kind of expanding some bike connections there to the bike lanes on Montreal west of West 7th, which would also uh, be a factor as well. But I don't think that's um, entirely determined yet. Some some combination of parking would end up being uh, impacted and lost though with really with any design. Right. Uh, this person says, I am assuming north south traffic is projected to be higher than east west. If so how much higher is the north south traffic projection from the east west? So, right now, south of Montreal, um, it's about 3,600 cars a day. So, then when we open it up, it's uh, projected to get about 8,800 cars a day. So then, uh, I don't know, south of Montreal. I don't know if I have the number for east-west on Montreal. I thought it was pretty close to about 5,000. So it's a little less on Montreal. And I don't see that number changing as much. Uh, this is about construction. Uh, did you say if Elway will be fully closed during parts of the project? It will be closed, but we'll open it to local traffic because um, there are some places that can't access any other way. So we'll have, it'll probably be a gravel road um, to like the apartments on the south end, so. I believe we've run through all the questions in the comment box here. I will uh, give people, oh, I see a hand raised. Please continue to add, add comments to the chat box. Follow up to the question on LA Street being closed. How long do you expect that construction to take and how long would you expect LA to be open only to local residents? Uh, it'd probably take from spring to fall. So this is a pretty hefty project and then you'll have a lot of um, sewer and water and other utilities that wanna go in here. Um, so it'll be from probably May till October that it would be closed. And then obviously uh, um, local traffic only would be for the whole summer, basically that whole time. See another raised hand here. Can I speak or? Yes, you're ready to go. Okay. Um, could you expand on what utilities will be addressed in this remodel or reconstruction? Um, so we're working with St. Paul Water. Uh, there's not currently a pedestrian level lighting out there. Um, so we'll put some of that in there. We always work with Excel Energy and um, Excel Gas if they want to do any relocation or upgrades. Uh, generally, when you tear everything up, it's the easiest time to put in new utilities. So they tend to come along with us. So we kind of work without anybody under the sun. So. Uh, this question came in the chat box. Does your group have any knowledge of the closure of the Chateau Montreal, not the high rise? Chateau Montreal over here. Um, parking lot to the north end. Would that be opened or is that a private property decision to block that? Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm not aware of that at all. So I can't comment. Uh, 
Uh, this also came in the chat. This person asked, uh, would people be able to walk to Crosby when the road is closed? Generally, when we do projects, we like to only do one sidewalk at a time. However, this one has only one in there now, so it's going to be kind of difficult to do that. We can look at that, um, but generally flip flop, put people on one side of the road and then the other. Um, see if we could build one prior to the other, but we'd have to look into that. I'm not sure. Great. Got a uh, direct message. Um, if the two-way stop is used, could traffic calming elements be added to keep drivers from speeding through the intersection? Um. Generally, things like speed bumps and the like are not put on county roads. Um, the only option would probably be a, a, a rapid flashing pedestrian button where it flashes at you when you push it uh, would be probably the only thing we could maybe possibly add. A suggestion, I believe, on your previous question about the uh, being able to walk to Crosby when the road is closed, uh, you could do the east side first. Yep, that is correct. Uh, well, we've got a little lull in questions. Please, please keep sending them in or raise your hand. Um, I just wanted to share how you can do the comments really quick. So these are all in the instructions. You can drag and drop your comment uh, when you're on desktop. It's similar for um, mobile. Just follow the instructions and then you add your comments. And then there'll be a little pop up asking about which option you're, you're commenting on. So you just click which option and then you submit. I'm going to submit this one and then delete later, but that's how it works. And, and one thing I want to point out is uh, County Commissioner Rafael Ortega is on the call tonight. So if anything is um, any issues come up, you can always uh, contact him in his office as well. How likely, this is a direct message, how likely would the county upgrade from a two-way stop to a roundabout in the future if the traffic conditions warranted it? Um, generally, we don't like to spend money on a place twice. Um, so I think whatever we put in there, we have to be happy with for at least until I retire and I'm a young guy. So um, it's, it's, it's one of those things where Trying to make a pedestrian friendly, you know, calm corridor, uh, the roundabout option is probably the best option, um, or even the mini roundabout, make it less impactful. Um, and then kind of slow people down. Your pedestrian crossing distances are less with the mini roundabout. It, uh, you can't scream down the hill with a mini roundabout, and it's easy and it's uh, just generally a better experience for everyone. We will uh, give it a few minutes here. Our project team is sticking around, but I'm kind of seeing a slow in comments. Uh, I do see a raised hand here. Here we go. Hi. Um, I would just like to comment on the fact that the city, I thought, had this priority about making biking and walking safer in the city. And given that fact, I am shocked that the two-way stop is even being considered. It seems like a lot of traffic and a lot of distance to cross, especially for walkers. Um, and, and I agree, and that's why we're doing both options. Um, 
The cheapest list, least impactful is a two-way stop. However, it isn't very pedestrian bike friendly. Um, so that's why we're kind of presenting to the public that, hey, there are other options, but the most uh, pedestrian and even motor vehicle friendly option is a roundabout because it has the least amount of crashes statistically for all of them. And then one more thing I wanted to add about, you mentioned the flashing lights, um, but that obviously needs a button to be pushed. Um, I don't know if you're aware of, uh, it's not flashing lights, but the, the button that you push to get a walk signal. Um, in Minneapolis, a lot of those are now right next to the street at the curb, so a biker can easily get to it. Would that be a consideration? Uh, we have put those in before for uh, like stoplight intersections and that easily could be an option here if uh, the two-way stop is chosen. Okay, that's what I would suggest, but I would suggest not a two-way stop. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. Okay, thank you. Another person with their hand raised. Yes, I'm wondering when you say the roundabout will be the most expensive, who gets to decide if it's based on price? Is it Rafael Ortega or is it, do we vote or is it, how does it, how is it decided or do you already have a budget and you have to fit your plan into it or? Um, we, we receive federal funds for this. Um, so we have like two to $3 million already in the bank. Um, so if we go over, uh, the city and the county have to cover that. Um, so that's the, and I think in the, in the uh, original application for the federal funds, we had on a stoplight here because we didn't do quite a, a traffic study before we asked for the funding. Um, so there's an additional, you know, $250,000 for a stoplight that's floating around that could be used for the roundabout. Thank you. Um, we got a comment uh, agreeing uh, that the two-way stop uh, there now seems to be considered optional by many drivers. Uh, got a direct message as well. Uh, how many pedestrians do you think will use the trail? I can't recall. Did we have a pedestrian count previous, Larry or Kevin? I can't remember, but it's it's a pretty highly used trail from what I know, and it will only get more so the more um, direct we make it. I don't know if I have a number off the top of my head, but it's a, a nice day like today. I'm sure there's a lot of people on it. Nick, uh, we just, our counts were just kind of an, more of an intuitive counts. They weren't actual counts. They were kind of, um, they, they were just kind of estimated. They weren't actual counts. All right, we'll uh, wait to see if there's uh, any more questions. Uh, give it a few minutes here. So I think we've dropped the uh website into the chat a few times please 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 do take the time to uh, take a look if you uh, want to do a deep dive and get a little more detail on any of these options um, and uh, drop comments if there's specific things on the layouts that you have questions about or you would like to um, uh, provide feedback on and then take that survey as well uh, which which of these do you prefer after you uh, flip through the three of them? Uh, person asked, all comments on the map visible to all public users? Yes, they are. They are anonymous and they are visible. You can like and dislike things as well as uh, respond to comments as well. So I believe if I pop this one open, oh, sorry, maybe that one's just me. I believe you can uh, interact with them, but um, you will be able to see everyone else's comment, yes. I 
any other questions? I'm sensing a lull in the in the comments, but we're we're always open to more. If not, we can end a little early tonight and give uh, give people some time back. Oh, here is here's another one. All right. Looks like uh, people are kind of wrapping up here, so I think I think we will too. Um, at any point, if you have any questions about the project please get in contact with us. Uh, all the information is on the website. The comment map is on the website. Um, you can contact us. Uh, Nick Fisher is the main point of contact. Um, and then you can also always follow social media stuff. We're also working with the district councils. Um, so you can also get in contact with them if you have any questions and they'll know who to go to. Um, and that wraps up for this evening. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and getting to know this project. Uh, we will uh, be around for, for a while. So please let us know if you have any questions or if you have any feedback. Thank you all very much. Have a good night.